Hello and welcome to a Smurd P video and today I'm carrying on with my what seems to be my Spider-Man year off omnibuses with uh, Spider-Man Omnibus by Roger Stern. Now I have had this book before and I have reviewed it but what I didn't do back then um, I, I couldn't I didn't have the luxury like I do now to actually read the whole Omnibus. I ended up selling it, which has always been probably a, a pet regret of mine. Um, seller's regret. I've, I've done it numerous times where I've sold stuff and I thought, damn, I shouldn't have sold that. <laughs> um, but it's fine, you know, needs must and all. So um, here we have um, the, the Hobgoblin versus Spider-Man. So this starts that whole story of the Hobgoblin's creation and I believe, if I'm right, this is what must be late 70s, early 80s era, if I am correct. I could be completely wrong, but we can have a look inside and hopefully that will remind me. Now, this has 50 issues, so it is a massive omnibus. Um, I always feel that 40 omnibus, 40, 40 to 43 issues creates a nice sized omnibus, but 50, you're doing 50 if you want the whole shebang in here, and that's what this book is. So um, there is a debate um, that there is a, another Roger Stern book which sort of wraps up Hobgoblin stories. I think that was released in the 90s. Is that Hobgoblin Lives? I've got it on my reading list anyway, so that when I finish this, I'm going to quickly read that just to, just to see how these links all tie up, I guess. So this collects the Spectacular Spider-Man 43 to 61, issue 85, and then the Amazing Spider-Man 206. So that's just a, a given that a, a book that he an issue he wrote, and then you get 224 to 252, and annual 1617. I'm just going to take the dust cover off very carefully. And under here, it's got the career. So you got Roger Stern and John Romita Jr. Very, um, uh, very popular writer and artist. And then it has the synthesis here. I'm not going to read that because I do not want to know what actually happens in this book. I try not to anyway. Um, and then we got the usual nice Spider-Man there. So they haven't changed that from the original release. And then we got Spider-Man by Roger Stern on this. So, um, I'm gonna, I feel like this is gonna be a struggle to try and get this all in shot, but I will try. And I'm not gonna spend too long, I always say this, I'm not gonna spend too long just flicking through the pages. I just wanna show you some of the artwork in there. So this has a piece there. Nice picture of him versus Hobgoblin there. And please have it. Yes, it has it. It has it. I'm very stuck, stoked. Oh, I, I sort of got it right. This is from June 1980. That is the first issue in this book, which is uh, the Spectacular Spider-Man. So um, it also has, uh, by looks for an introduction by Roger Stern. So I thought it was around this area. And the 80s era for me, I f late 70s, early 80s, mid 80s had some of the best writers in comic history and this takes you all the way up to may 1984 so i would have been one that's sad isn't it that's actually it's not sad because i feel like when i was born i got the best i came at the right time because now when i'm reading back on spider-man and we're talking 60 odd years if i had been born when it first came I would be missing out on some of this new stuff. So I'm always happy. So we've got an introduction by Roger Stern. You usually have the covers in here. And then the issues. Etc. So I'll just quickly try and whiz through a bit. So you can see what sort of art that John was um, doing back in those days. Just try and compromise in what I'm doing. Just quickly flick 
through it. Hopefully, if we're lucky, I get some nice spread. The artwork is very crisp. Very crisp, nice looking. It's great. Black cats. Love all that stuff. Juggernaut! That's not the issue where he ends up in the cement, is it? That'd be pretty cool. Alright, guys. Hobgoblin. Just why I'm here. I feel like this Hobgoblin story is going to be epic. How many pages does this have? Wow. It's quite a lot of pages. And then that, that first swinging issue when he's back with the black costume. So it has... I feel like this is the end of the story. Yeah, 1,270 issues. That is a, a lot. Then we've got some extra materials, etc. Maybe a timeline by the looks of it. Looks pretty cool. Hey, promo pictures of all these villains, perhaps, or villains that we're perhaps not too familiar with. And then some artwork. So I guess when they were talking about the black costume, I feel like maybe somebody looked at this when they were thinking about Miles' costume. Miles Morales. So, and then Miles for Tales. Spider-Man Magazine. And that beautiful, beautiful cover on there. So this, I didn't get a direct market cover, obviously. So this is, um, I'm really excited to get this book. And I, I just, I thought the reason why I'll quickly review it, uh, even though I've done it, given an overview before, I just thought, actually, I should I should do it because if I do it, those who weren't watching my channel back then may look at this and say, actually, I could still get Roger Stern Omnibus for a reasonable price right now and go get it from somewhere. Um, I actually, I think I bought this actually on Evil Bay. Um, uh, but I've noticed that since then it's been on um, Forbidden Planet. I'm not sure about Amazon. They say it's been on Forbidden Planet. And um, I'm sure in some other retails it's still around. Um, I've still seen it on Evil Bay for a reasonable price, which is the most important thing. Um, I tried to get Omnibuses for a decent price. Sometimes it pans out, sometimes not. Um, and with Spider-Man, they are very popular, so they will sell out. Um, this run will sell out no matter what happens and then of course you're um you're paying on the second market and omnibuses historically go up they certainly go up anyway i hope you like my video uh, please support my channel by subscribing make sure you look after yourself and embrace the geekiness take care goodbye folks oh.